and argued a good case for what he believes. And that is, he said, he was talking about African American. Man, after I heard that stuff, I could teach that uh, class, Brother Cooper. He was talking about how most of the diseases that we have as African Americans are preventable. He proved a case that we think, and, and I'm being honest, I even believed some of what he was saying before that, you know, we as African American people, we're prone to diabetes, we're pr prone to high blood pressure because of, you know, our heritage, because of our gene, our genetical makeup. And what he said is, that's one of the biggest misnomers out there. It's not true. Listen, he said it's not true. He said it, it, it is true that we, have, that we are disproportionately affected by diabetes, high blood pressure, et cetera, et cetera. He said, but it has nothing to do with heredity. It has to do with diet. It has nothing to do with the fact that we're black. It has to do with the fact how black people eat. Now, it is a black issue, but it's not, it ain't got nothing to do with, in other words, that's a big game changer. Yeah. It's saying it can be prevented, it can be changed. Now, that's important. Yeah. He said they did research and they found out that uh, all the people, and that's not just black people, but the people in the South from, from East Texas all the way to Florida and, maybe, and from the Mason-Dixon line down, they did extensive research, I think it was Harvard, and they found that basically the, the diet of the people there is a high fried food diet. It's a high fried food, and fried food and burnt food, char, char, very char, charred food. And what he said is all of that releases free radicals in your body. So cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes, all these things, preventable. Yeah, sugar. Preventable. Yeah, high, high sugar, preventable. And reversible. Yeah and, yeah, and reversible. Preventable and reversible. So, I know this was financial class, but, but what I was just saying was, if we would, if we would actually take stewardship over our lunch, let me just say it like that, because that's the big thing that everybody's going to have every day. You're going to have a lunch. Now, you, a lot of folks got to work in the field and everything else. But if you would take stewardship of that, not only is a money saver, but it could be a life saver. It's a money saver, but in the, while you're saving money, you could be saving your health, mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're really kind of at the, the, the mercy of what's out there at the time when you have a hunger pain. And the truth be told, when you have a hunger pain, what, what happens? You go, you, hey, listen, you, can, you, you are going to, hey, you are going to respond immediately. You know, you sitting there confessing in the name of Jesus, but when you, when that hunger really hits you, you look like, oh, Carl Jr., there we go. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then your choices are not that, you know, and, and you notice how all the fast food places have tried to say, well, we're going to have a salad, we're going to have a wrap, we're going to have a but you know, it's not like you preparing what you know you need to, to have. All right? So uh, I said that. I said, uh, where are we at? Next one was learn to buy based on money you currently have. In other words, stop charging everything. If it's not, use that debit card. If you ain't got it in the, in the, in the account, then you don't, don't spend it. What's the next one? <coughs> Learn not to use the credit card for everything. You know, I, you should have a credit card for certain things, but really I found that these days you, you can get away with not having them pretty much. There's, there's only a couple of instances you really need them if you hotel or rent a car or whatever. And, and really, to be honest with you, you can actually do it without a credit card. They're just going to take that money out right then, but that, there again, do you have the money? What's the next one? eat more at home, or pack lunches to work. I just spent a lot of time talking about that, right? Amen? Uh, let me go over a little bit, because I want to finish this day, and we started late, so let's go on to the next slide. Spend wisely. Wherever possible, use coupons. Wherever possible, purchase used items. 
Well, I'm telling you, you can save a lot of money. Uh, excuse me. Particularly, you know, people when they buy cars, they always want to buy the newest thing. Hey, do you realize there's a huge savings between you buying something that's absolutely new than something that had 5,000 miles on it and somebody just, the moment you drive that car off the lot, the, it, the, the value of it just plummets. And, you know, certified pre-owned or or even the last year's model, or just a few miles, just got a, ain't that many? 10,000 miles, I think it's a cycle. Like, well, I got this brand new. So what? I'd rather have the brand new savings. It's all going to be used. It's used as soon as you drive off the lot anyway. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, somebody say amen. 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 Wherever possible, purchase items on sale. And, of course, you have to put an asterisk on that because anything that they say is sale is not always sale. I mean, it's a sale from the inflated price that they put on there already. You know, so you really do have to kind of be uh, uh, wise and research things. Because somebody says sale, but the thing was two, three times more than what it cost in the first place. So now you'll say, like, uh, like uh, Joseph A. Bank. Joseph A. Bank will tell you it's a sale going on on some suits, but they had the suits at seven hundred dollars. So then they so they said now they you know what I'm talking about, brother. Then they said it was a sale, but the sale is actually more than what I can get at the other place. But you know it's just it's a, you have to watch it. You have to watch it. All right. Uh, wherever possible, buy generic. Again, that's on a case by case basis. That's why I said wherever possible. That's on a case by case basis. But let's face it. These days, you can go to these places like. Uh, Good Lord, you don't even have to go to CVS or, or Walgreens. You can get some stuff at Costco. You can get some stuff at, at, at Sam's Club. And they say, you know, the, the main ingredient, the, the main operative ingredient is in there. It's just as good as that brand name. But psychologically, we're used to the brand name. Do you know how, we, how much we're used to brand names? You don't even realize how much you're used to brand name. Uh, what, what is this called? Huh? If you ask a lot of people, they'll say that's a Kleenex. Kleenex. Uh -huh. yeah. That's not a Kleenex. That's a tissue. But a lot of people say it's a Kleenex because Kleenex is a is a brand. Yes. If I tell you go 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 take this piece of paper and 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 make a Xerox copy of this. Xerox. Well, wait a minute. Xerox is a brand name. All you need to do is make a copy. It could be Canon, but we we conditioned to Xerox this. Please Xerox it. Mm -hmm. yes. Xerox it. That's a brand name. See, so brand, that's why people have brands. They have brands to get you to be faithful to their brand. Right, right. Brands are very important. That means right. money's coming back to that particular company. But the truth of the matter is, it's not the brand. It's just it, it, the product is what you want. You just want to copy something. You just want a tissue. You just want to dry your nose. But products are so associated with a name that you know, it's like we think uh, uh, Jello is, you know, is Jello or is pudding. All pudding is Jello. You know, it's not. That's the name of the of the brand. Uh, take what was, what's the next one? Take the time to do price comparisons. We talked about that carpool. You know, one of the things that, as the pastor of this church, I'm really trying to do more of. In fact, one of the reasons that we have men's fellowship, um, that we have men's fellowship today at the church, is to take advantage of, of the fact that we're already here. In other words, to, 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 to minimize uh, the excessive use of gas. You know? So those are things you ought to think about too. How, how do I, how do I, you know, we can be riding the church together. We're going to the same place. You know, maybe you have a meeting afterwards. Well, okay, I can sacrifice that a little bit. Why are you doing that? Maybe I can use that time to, 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 to review the pastor's notes. Use that as my homework time or whatever. There are things that we can do to maximize our transportation instead of this attitude that we have in California that everybody, you know, has a car and everybody rides alone in their old car. It's kind of an individuality attitude. You know, everybody, that's why they have those HOV lanes, right? They want to encourage people to Save gas and ride together. Y'all going to the same place? Amen? Amen? All right, turn off on used lights in the home. I can put 
my dad chapter one, verse one on that one. But it's true, you know, uh, that saves money. All right, I'm almost finished. Number 19, use godly judgment. Got two more slides. We're done. Use godly judgment. Don't fall for deceptive business advertisements. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. And I talked about that a little bit earlier, didn't I? You know, in terms of people saying things. But I'm going to tell you something. This is really prevalent now. Here's the thing that's going on. You would think in a time of lack, in a time of tough economic times, that people would be more sensitive to people and they'd be, be trying to understand what's tough times. We, we don't want to try to gouge anybody. There's more gouging going on now than in a time of plenty. Seriously, I mean, you need to know that. There's more gouging and deceptive practices going on now than when things were good economically. Because, because people, when, when times economically are really tough, then people are desperate or they're really trying for the, they're really grabbing for any kind of brass ring, any kind of silver bullet. Like, well, I could just do that. Well, maybe it's kind of a, like a lottery mentality. If I could just do this, I could hit the lottery and then all my problems would be over with. So there is a good time for people to, to uh, advertise you on that sense of uh, desperation or that long shot mentality. <laughs> There's a good time for people to, to try to get you into the casino. Because yeah. you, you got a lottery mentality and they're like, come on. You can, all your troubles could be over with this weekend. Just come on down here to the, to the wherever. Tribal, you know, whatever. Well, because what? Because you're looking for a home run yeah. instead of a single. You know, you're looking for you know, a big hit instead of just getting on base. Yeah. And I'm telling you, every day there's somebody with some scheme trying to get your money. And of course, you know they can't get... It's like... A... It's like... A... Fornication. You can't, you can't have sex with somebody unless you, unless you're with them, unless you're presently with them, right? There's no problem. You stay away from me. No problem. They can't do anything unless they can get you to, to, to start talking to them. They need you to. So therefore, they got to put something out there that sounds so good. What do you say? Make me an offer I can't what refuse. It's got to be sound so good. We want to get, oh, we want to give you, you just won. Oh, there it is. That is one right there. You just won. As soon as they say that right there, I just, yeah. we're in a time of lack, and you telling me that I just won. Yeah. So you got to watch your, see, no, no, nobody will tell you about this in these secular financial seminars, <laughs> but I'm telling you because it's a spiritual thing. We have to make sure that we understand what's on the inside of us. Yeah. What's on the inside of you? Uh, I may close with this one. This is a wonderful scripture that, that I was reminded about recently. Uh, I need you to see this. I need you to see this scripture. Because this relates to what I'm talking about right now. Oh, come on. Uh-oh. It's, uh, I think it's John 14 and 30. A very important scripture the church needs to know. John 14 and 30. It says, I can't believe this thing yet, like that. It says, hereafter, Jesus speaking, he says, hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh, but he has nothing in me. That's an important scripture. If you've never heard that before, you need to underline it, commit it to memory. It says, the prince of this world cometh, but he has nothing in me. Let me explain that to you. Satan comes, and he comes to tempt. Mm -hmm. And he's looking to see what you have in you. Because mm. right. mm -hmm. he can only work with what you have in you. You know, you don't like ice cream, he can't tempt you with ice cream. Y'all with me today? Yes. You don't like, uh, if you're a man, you don't like girls, well, then he can't tempt you with girls, but maybe you like boys. But y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. See, he comes, 
to see what you have in you. So he only he can only tempt you based on what you have in you. But Jesus said, He comes, but He has nothing in He has nothing in me. He's not gonna find anything in me. That's why the very first thing that had to happen before Jesus could start his ministry was he had to go out there and fast for 40 days and show and show that he has nothing in me. So he can't, you can't do that. You tempted me in my flesh. Three temptations, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and what? The pride of life. So he said, you have nothing in me. So what I'm trying to tell you is, in conclusion, when the people come and they say, you have just won something. What is it? Is there anything in you that has a lottery mentality that says, that's what I've been hoping on. Right. I've been hoping to hit. As opposed to my hope is in tithes and offerings. There's nothing wrong with you being blessed materially. Did you hear me? I'm not speaking against material prosperity. I'm talking about where do you think you're going to find it? Yes. If you feel that your ship is, your hope is in the, the what you call the clearing house? What is it called? Publishers. Publishers clearing house. Mm -hmm. If that's what's in you, there's a lot of people out there that are going to come to find that in you. They're going to, they're always going to come saying, you, you have just, and I'm going to tell you something, church. I've lived long enough to realize, you know, I may have checked it out once or twice. And every time I checked it out, there was always a catch. It was always a lie. It was always a lie. You checked it out, and it was always a lie. And please, please, don't ever be foolish enough to have somebody tell you that they're going to bless you and help you, and all you had to do was put up some money to do it. Don't, now, don't be that kind of fool. I, yeah, I use the word fool. The fool and his money are soon part. In other words, the only thing worse than you struggling right now is you taking a little bit of something that you have, barely have, and then putting it in a, a false hope. Yes. Because they said that they, that, that they got elaborate schemes. Good Lord, they got schemes. They got schemes of, I had one just recently that people called and said, oh, they had my name, they had, and even a Christian thing to it. Some somebody uh, Christian and they want to spread the gospel and they died and they left this living trust or something like that and they, it's a million died, and they want to give it to you Pastor Tucker now all you have to do is put $10,000 in this trust account and it will call that, that's the processing fee for you to get a million dollars going to fund your church and do everything else. I said, the devil is a liar. I said, aside from that, if I had $10,000, I wouldn't need y'all at all. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Good Lord. <laughs> God is good. All right. <laughs>